Welcome one, welcome all to the pristine start and expert hauling of owner-operator John McCormick in his 2021 Kenworth W900L, christened Bandit for some fairly obvious reasons. It's not just the snowman's classic black and gold throwback paint scheme on the beautiful rigs, that's all there is to it though. I'm Todd Dills, and for this edition of Overdrive Radio, we're going to drop you right into a run with Oakley Transport leased owner-operator McCormick. McCormick was kind enough to take me along for the ride on one of his regular runs back and forth between Crestline Plastic Pipe in Henderson, Kentucky, near his home in Robards, and Westlake Chemicals PVC Complex in Calvert City. Hooked to one of two Mac pneumatic tank trailers owned by Oakley, McCormick's Bandit Kenworth cuts a fine picture whether offloading PVC powder into one of the silos at Crestline, where they turn that powder into pipe. What you hear there is the sound of McCormick's blower airing off the product. Earplugs recommended, for sure. Anyway, Bandit cuts a fine picture for fellow travelers most anywhere, hauling along I-69 or 24 or elsewhere between the two principal points for most of his runs. McCormick's got a Pete and two Western Stars in his past, too. Pete, a 2003 379 he had when he was over the road pulling coast to coast, running in a team with his wife of now more than two decades, Marilyn, who's since left the road. With the two Western Stars subsequently, he built a solid partnership for basic preventive maintenance with a Detroit dealer right next to the Crestline facility, Clark Power Services. Before I got to Kenworth, I had, I had Western Stars. Okay. They do all my work on my, on my Western Stars, of course. They're a Detroit dealer, so. You know. And whenever I got this one, I, I asked them about you know, changing oil on it, which they have to they have to order the filters, especially for me, because this one's got a Cummins in it, but they still do it. So, yeah, that's just one of them deals where you get a good working relationship with, with somebody, you want to stick with them. And, even though they're technically not working on their stuff, you know. Yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure people would wonder why I take a Cummins to a Detroit dealer to have the oil tank. <laughs> McCormick's 2021 W900L was winner in one of two working bobtail categories of Overdrive's 2022 Pride and Polish Virtual Truck Show and Competition. We'll hear much more about the rig and McCormick's business in today's edition of Overdrive Radio for December 2nd, 2022. You can catch plenty of views of the rig in the post that houses the podcast. Look for a link to it in the show notes or find it at overdriveonline.com slash overdrive hyphen radio. McCormick will introduce the bandit to us just after this word from Overdrive Radio's sponsor. Now that winter's here, it's time to prepare yourself for the conditions you'll encounter. By adding Howe's Diesel Treat at every fill-up, you can prevent your diesel fuel from gelling in even the coldest temperatures. While it safely removes water, adds lubricity, and prevents deposits, the nation's number one anti-gel will help protect your engine and provide you with the added power you crave. Backed by the only no-tow guarantee, Howe's Diesel Treat will keep you rolling no matter what weather comes your way. Learn more at howesproducts.com. Howes. Tested. Trusted. Guaranteed. Find more information at howesproducts.com and dial 615-852-8530 and leave a voice message for me and I'll send you a prize pack that McCormick himself also got from the fine folks at Howes. Features their diesel treat and lifeline anti-gel fuel treatments, the Howes multi-purpose penetrating oil, and more swag from the company. Again, dial the podcast message line at 615-852-8530. We'll be back in touch for shipping information. Six rears, 280 inch wheelbase, and the, the B 
paint job on it is black and gold, which is the same paint job that was on the Kenworth in Smokey and the Bandit. Now the name Bandit, uh, which kind of has a double entendre for me because okay. whenever I whenever I signed up for Mads in, in 2020 or 2022 uh, of course on the registration form it asked does the truck have a name <laughs> well at the time no it didn't have a name and right after I'd done that well, when I first bought the truck, bringing it back from Little Rock, uh, of course, everybody on, on the CB radio was was going on about, yeah, there goes Snowman. And, you know, there's the bandit. <laughs> and after I signed up for the truck show, I was, I was headed down here, and two guys both are down here on 69 hollered and said there goes the bandit <laughs> so I thought well I'll just name the truck bandit and I thought sure. everybody everybody wants to call it bandit I'll just I'll just call it you know that's what I'll call it bandit <laughs> but the other thing is is when me and my wife run team we got a little Yorkie when he was six weeks old. And whenever they brought him home, of course, I was out over the road, so I wasn't at home whenever they got him. Whenever they brought him home, his coloring on him, he looked like he had a black mask on, kind of like a raccoon. <laughs> and they were trying to decide what to name him, and my son says, well, he looks like a bandit. <laughs> So we named him Bandit, and, and you know, Bandit was, he was my little buddy, whenever, he was supposed to have been for my wife, but whenever I got home, he took up with me, uh, he followed me every step that I ever took, and I don't know, he was probably a couple months old whenever she went to driving, so he pretty much grew up in the truck, and I can tell everybody he's he's marked everything from from Boston to to L.A. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, he he was always my you know he was my little buddy. Right, right. You know, we had him for uh, seventeen years. Wow. Yeah. That's a long uh, long life for a dog. Yeah. Right. Bandit's long life is memorialized on the 2021 Kenworth Bandit's driver's side sleeper window, along with two other Yorkies McCormick's have lived with, Sassy and Molly. McCormick then walked me through his previous trucks. Before I got this one, uh, I had a uh, 16 Western Star 5700. I had about, I don't know, I had about 600000 on it, and I just, I was really wanting to trade it, and, and uh, I guess, you know, I wanted something with, you know, I liked the Western Star, I liked all the room and stuff on it, but I just wanted something that I could dress up a little more, and... Uh, that had a little bit of a resale value too. And, you know, of course, I went and talked to Peterbilt, and you know, they just they would they would sell me a truck, but nobody wanted that fifty-seven hundred. They didn't want to trade for it. Oh, I guess. So, uh, yeah, I talked to Kenworth out in Springfield, Missouri. And I said, yeah, we'll, we'll trade for it, you know, so, well, I see it on the house. I've done looked on their website, and, you know, there was... In one half mile, keep right. You know, they had all different kind of colors and stuff, and, and uh, but the 
one they had on their lot was with blue and silver. Good. And but like I said, they they had sold it before I could get. Basically, I had to you know I had to get the approval from from Oakley because of the weight. Owner operator McCormick's loads hauling PVC powder out of Westlake Chemicals facility in Calvert City, Kentucky, to which we were rolling as we spoke, max out legal weight with a payload of almost 45,000 pounds. He's 34,970 pounds empty, hooked to a Mac pneumatic tank. And they sold it before I got the approval. And so yeah, he told me he had this one, and, and uh, it was it was down in. This one was down in Dallas, Texas. Right. right. Yeah. So I told him, I said, well, I want the black and gold one that's sitting in Dallas. So, so we done a paperwork and he got the proof on it and or got the you know, got the hold put on it so nobody could sell it. And, and they had had somebody drive it up, which actually I picked it up in Little Rock. Okay. And He's going to bring it all the way to Springfield, Missouri, and I told him, I said, well, I got to I gotta go to Little Rock anyway. You might as well just take it to Little Rock. And so, so they, took it, they took it down there, and I picked it up down there. And, you know, Continue on route. It's about November of 2020. So, yeah. You know, since then, it's... Uh... Clearly, you've, you've done some things to it. I don't think it, uh, I think it looked, probably didn't look quite like this on the inside no. when you picked it up. <laughs> no, I've, I've put a bunch of, you know, or what chrome I can find on the dash. Yeah. Um, and I've done more on the interior, you know, put the lights on it, changed lights on the back of the sleeper, uh, WTI fenders. And I got to put the drop visor and the window chops. Um, bug shield, done the window chops <laughs> on the sleepers too. Uh, yeah, I just I just want everything to match, you know. Yeah. That's why I only went with the three inch window chops because they line up with the with the visor. I only got my bumper in. The bumper is a significant change from what overdrive readers have seen of Bandit in the Pride and Polish program, as the pictures from McCormick's entry were taken well prior to installation of the new hardware. I ordered it in October of last year. I was really hoping it, hoping to have it in before Matt's in right. March. Well, that didn't happen. It was like, the, I think it's the end of June before I finally got it. Me and my son, we put it on. He drives the yard truck down here at the Tyson plant sure. uh, on the live ball side. So basically, whenever the, the company that, that goes out to the farm, they'll bring them into the plant and they drop them in the, what do you call it? Let's see, drops them in the fan, they drop the trailers in the fan house. And then he goes out, pulls the trailer out of the fan house, takes them into the plant to unload them, and then brings them back out. That's what, that's what he does. Your bumper uh, came in in June. Yeah, where, where'd you order that from? Uh, chrome shop up in Hobstadt, Indiana, called Chrome Dome. Uh, that's where everything has come from. I, I buy everything from him. Gotcha. A really great guy to deal with. He just, right. Yeah, I, I call him up on the phone, tell him what I need. Yeah. He's either got it or, or he's got an order. Have you done a lot on the, uh, the chrome accessories on the exterior other than stuff we've talked about already? Um, I added the, you know, I got 13 cap lights now. Okay. So I added Head five, so right. I had what eight. Uh, can't do that math in my head today for some reason. <laughs> yeah, added the, added the chrome or the lights. Yeah. Uh, I've got 
underglow light from that I ordered from Shift Products. They're just amber. Yeah, amber, okay. Yeah, I got I got in trouble back years ago out in Utah for having blue lights in the back of the cab. Oh, okay, yeah. 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 Ever since then, I stick. You know, I, I like the different colors, yeah. but. I stick to red and amber. That way I don't, you know, most of the time if it's red and amber, I don't get hassled. Yeah. You know. But yeah, I got I got some more stuff coming. I got I got a floorboard that's being painted. Uh, I ordered me an aluminum floorboard from uh, Rockwood. But I, I got it in. I took it to the paint shop and then painted it. Uh, What's it going to look like? I'm not real sure. <laughs> I know it's going to be black and gold. Okay. But, uh, well, I say paint shop, actually. It's, well, the guy's got a shop, but he, he don't, he's kind of retired. He don't, he just does it on the side. Right, right. right. Uh, I told him, you know, basically I just give him free reign of it, you know. Uh, you know, he's, he's the one that painted my fenders. Okay. So, yeah, I gave him, I gave him pretty much free reign of it. He said he had a friend of his that does airbrushing, and so he was gonna talk to her, see if she wanted, you know. Yeah. So I told him, I said, well, I said, you know the truck, you've seen, you know, you know pretty much the theme of the truck. I said, just, you know, yeah. you, you can go from there. Use your creativity. You know? Yeah. yeah. Every, everything that I've ever seen that he's done looks great. So he's, he's got a little place on 41 there, uh, just north of the house. What's his name? Chop. <laughs> I don't know what his name yeah. is. Uh, I don't know what his actual name is. Yeah. Everybody calls it Chop. It's sure to be a spectacular addition to an already decked out interior, no doubt, when Chop finishes up with it. Chop's in the race cars and... Yeah. And he does body work and stuff. Okay, and like okay. I said, he doesn't. He does it for friends and family. You know, kind of like that. Yeah. And I think he done my fenders just because he thought it'd be be cool to to do and, and a challenge, you know. Yeah. As noted, find pictures of those fenders. And most all of these and other features of the rig in the post that houses this podcast for December 2, 2022 at overdriveonline.com slash overdrive hyphen radio. Rapper McCormick notes a significant caveat for the day those pictures were taken, though. Area in north central Kentucky where he lives and hauls had gotten some of its first significant snow of the season in the days ahead of it. And yes, this bandit works. Day in, day out. I love doing, you know... I love doing this run right here. Well, two reasons. One, it gets me home every night. Yep. And so I don't have to worry about where I'm going to park, you know. Yep. Don't have to worry about what I'm going to eat. Anything. Well, I do this week because life's in Florida, but. <laughs> At home, yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, you know. But one bad thing about it is, is. is there's not a truck wash in route. <laughs> yeah. 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 There, there's a great lady down in Paducah that's got a truck wash over there that, that I go to whenever I can. But it's just finding the time to go do it. Yep. And all that. But, but yeah. it's still 20 mile out of route, 20 mile back. So. It's a pretty tight run McCormick's on getting two round trips in within the time he wants to be done. On an average week, his settlements, minus fuel expense and plus fuel surcharge, paid a percentage of the load given the short nature of the hauls. He's able to gross about 5,000 a week, he said. To support the family, pay for the truck, and continue to invest in the equipment and the business. Though load availability had been showing some signs of slowing with the construction industry that much of the product he's hauling ends up serving, it's a good gig. It has been his bread and butter for quite some time now. This one here, uh, we started this in like, October of 19. Maybe this is our third year doing this. Sure. Uh, now, before that, 
there was a there was a plant over between Evansville and Mount Vernon, Indiana. Okay. That I used to run up there. It wasn't a bad deal, but you know, I don't know if you've ever been through Henderson and Evansville. Yeah, I mean it's been a while. Yeah, well, you know about all the traffic lights. Yeah. So yeah. So trying to do two of those in a day and still be able to get home, uh, what you know, most of the time it didn't happen. Yeah. But I do, you know, every now and then uh, things slow down. You know, here a couple months ago, I, I went out over the road. And I found myself down in Savannah, Georgia, and went out to Oklahoma. After this run, just ahead of the Thanksgiving holiday, Cormac was running out to Oklahoma again with a series of eight loads he guessed may have been diverted from rail. Not due to any looming rail strike, though, with speculation of such dominating the news at the time, continuing to an extent, the customer, he suspected, may just not have wanted to pay rental on the rail over the holiday. That little... I think two months and then another month or three months that from the time they closed that plant until we started running up here, you know. Uh, I had one run away from Savannah, Georgia, clear to uh, San Francisco. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's, and, that's something yeah. You, you guys probably used to do a lot more of. Uh, you and your wife were teaming, you said, when you were running reefer back in the day, right? Yeah, back, back then, yeah, we was in California all the time, but... Uh, yeah, we used to, we were working for a company out of Owensboro, and uh, they got a contract hauling Baskin Robbins ice cream out of Owensboro. We went from Owensboro to Miraloma, California, and then we picked up produce out of California and went to Webster, Massachusetts. <laughs> And then we went to Wells, Maine, picked up newspaper inserts, and they were usually coming around the Midwest, and depending on where they were going, we either made the deliveries or, or we brought them back and dropped them on the yard, and we picked up another load of ice cream and went back out. Right. Yeah. But, yeah, that, we enjoyed it, but it was, that was hustling because we'd make it around about every 10 days. Wow. Yeah. That, that broker in California, he would, just as soon as dispatch told him we was headed that way, I mean, a lot of times we hadn't even made it out of Owensboro yet. He would call me on the phone, want to know when I was going to be there, and for me to stop and stop and give him a fax number so that he can fax me reload information. Yeah, so a lot of times I knew, you know, three days before I even delivered what I was going to pick up. And, you know, of course it all went back to it all went back to Webster, Mass. So that's good. Were you guys on our operators then? Not then. No. Okay. No, that was, uh, see, I bought my first truck in 07. Okay. See, that one was an 03, uh, 379 Peterbilt that I can still kick myself for ever, ever getting rid of. I should have, I should have kept it. Yeah, it had no. the 6NZ. Yeah, no, uh, no DEF. No, no, none of that. Or no DPF. Uh, yeah. Of yeah, it, it was pre-emissions and, yeah. and all that, but... But it had uh, no, uh, had over a million and a half miles on it, and I just I got tired of working on it every weekend, and, uh, and sure. I decided that you know I thought, I'm gonna buy me a new truck, you know, that way I don't have to work on it. Of course, this is my third new truck since then. And, <laughs> And I still wish I had that, that 03. Yeah. <laughs> you probably had to work on all those to an extent, right? To an extent. Yeah. Not, not nearly no, as much. Not His last Western Star gave him a few fits with the emissions control system. 
Right around 300,000 miles or so, he said. The large outlay for replacement of several parts of that system, including a variety of sensors, as well as complications with filtering equipment and exhaust, he started utilizing Pittsburgh Power's Max Mileage Catalyst Fuel Treatment, one among treatments out there designed in part as a preventive to some emissions headaches. He didn't have a significant issue over the next 300,000 miles in the Western Star, at which point he traded for the Bandit. With a couple hundred thousand on the Kenworth now, and still using the Max Mileage Catalyst at every fill-up, he guesses he might have clear education that treatment helps as a preventive about a year from now. So far, the only issues he's had maintenance-wise had to do with a seal that failed in the power steering pump in the Kenworth, which was replaced. Bandit's two years into a five-year note, he said, and given inflation and used the new equipment pricing, he's happy he picked it up when he did in late 2020. Yeah, back when I got it, David, you know, it was, it was still expensive, oh, but yeah. it was, it was, uh, within reason. Now, you know, like I said, they've, what I give, give for this truck, you know, they've jumped, you know, $75,000 since it. If I wanted to sell this truck, I could probably make money on it, but, but like I told somebody, you know, the problem is you can't find nothing to replace it. Now, if I was getting out of trucking, yeah, it'd be great. But, uh, <laughs> you feel feel like a local bank, you have a relationship with a banker, um, what, what do you do for the financing on this thing? Well, this one, uh, it's financed, the dealership had their own finance company. And yeah, so, so you use those? You use yeah, them. so I just used them. And, uh, yeah, the one before that, it's, well, I guess about, about all the trucks I've had been financed through, you know, my yeah. first one was financed through PACCAR. The second two were both financed through Daimler. This one, I, like I said, this one here was financed through the, yeah, through the finance company. Dealerships got their own finance company, so. What's the dealer group there? Uh, MHC Kenworth. MHC, yeah, okay. We got we got Kenworth up in Evansville, which anything you know related related to warranty or yeah. well, basically anything but an oil change, you, I take it up there. But yeah, Evansville is yeah, it can't be more than thirty minutes from you, right? Uh, yeah, about that. Yeah. But that's that's Palmer's truck group up there, so. Okay. But I I started working on the trucks whenever I was sixteen, so. Yeah. Most of the guys at all the parts houses and the dealerships, and, you know, they all know me. So <laughs> cool. uh, they, they've all known me for years. So yeah. nobody really gives me much, you know, much grief over buying a truck somewhere else. <laughs> but I, I just tell them, I, I, I've never been able to deal locally. I don't know why it is, but as far as buying trucks and stuff, I, I've never been able to deal locally with anybody. I would like to, but... Either they want, they want too much, or they don't have what you want, or... Yeah. Then I would get what you want, or... Perhaps there's an enterprising dealer around central, north central Kentucky with an idea for McCormick? In any case, we'll hear more from the owner-operator in a subsequent edition of Overdrive Radio, so keep tuned for that. And here's a big thanks to the owner-operator for his time. Likewise, a big congrats on his working bobtail win and Overdrive's pride and polish. Catch more close looks at winning owners now and through the new year at overdriveonline.com slash pride hyphen polish. Overdrive Radio is a production of Overdrive, the voice of the American trucker. It's edited and produced by me, Todd Bills, with the acoustic guitar and other support of trucker songwriter and overdrive contributor long haul Paul Marhofer. The theme is Legend of the Snake Man by Marhofer, featuring the guitar work of Travis, the Snake Man himself, Lamech, Terry Two Sox Richardson on bass, keys by Tisha Mingo, Jim Whitehead, and on drums, Mr. Andrew Marshall. The podcast is backed up further by Overdrive's own news editor Matt Cole, social media coordinator Holly Young, executive veteran Alex Lockey, and intrepid video editors Lawson Rudisil and Mr. Andrew Glenn. Big thanks again to Overdrive Radio sponsor Howes. You can find that Howes, that's H O W E S, HowesProducts.com. Until next time, 